Shall we head north of the border and talk about our favorite dictator up there in Canada and what the Trudeau government is doing, which is doubling down on censorship? Of course, we've been following what the Trudeau government has been doing uh, since the early part of this year as it relates to online censorship, their streaming bill, what they've done, of course, to clamp down and take away freedoms, personal freedoms of, of, of truckers in Canada, stealing, locking bank accounts, of course, forcing people to do things with their bodies that they don't want to do. Um, the list is endless. Now, of course, they want to regulate speech. And this bill, Bill C-11, C-11, would regulate content that it doesn't like. Um, and the man who wrote the bill is Trudeau lackey Pablo Rodriguez. Um, here he was introducing the bill, and he lays out exactly why this is just totally harmless, nothing to see here. Listen. This is the first of a few pieces of legislation that are part of my mandate as Minister of Canadian Heritage, and these are online streaming, online news, and online safety. All the three work together to make the internet a fairer, more inclusive, safer, and more competitive place for Canadians. He sounds so friendly, right? Like he's like your Canadian Santa Claus, right? I'm just going to take care yeah. of... Is that a shark, shark skin jacket? <laughs> yeah, is that velvet? <laughs> no, <laughs> is that a cowlick? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we talked earlier about what is a cowlick. Yeah. I think he has one. See, that's why you got to watch the live show. If you're watching the, the rebroadcast, we talked about velour and fabric in. Uh, uh, no, we talked about shows. cowlicks, cowlicks in your hair. Yeah. Um, yeah. So he seems like, a, you know, he's like a nice guy, right? He, he seems like the, the, the Canadian Santa Claus. He's going to, he just wants to protect what you see, hear, and read online in Canada, right? And only if it fits by our government, Trudeau administration standards that's what you get to see here and read um he said quote and i'll you can take my laptop philip here this is what he said and according to reclaim the net has a good breakdown of this he said we made it very clear in the online streaming act that this does not apply to what individual canadians and creators post online rodriguez said no users no online creators will be regulated only companies themselves will have new responsibilities However, that claim has been contradicted by the Can uh, Canada Radio, Television, and Communications Commission and the expert advisory group on online safety that he appointed. Online platforms would have to regulate based on the speech of its user, so it would affect... User-generated content. User-generated content, exactly. Which is what they said it would not do, right? right. Gener just control what is posted by individual users on their Facebook accounts. Uh, he is saying that this is necessary for democracy, which to me strikes at the very term of democracy, right? That that a government should belong to the people and that all people's opinions are heard and expressible. Uh, yeah, he, but this bill now, it already passed the House and is currently sitting in the Senate. And as these things become more and more clarified, the Canadian people have the right to say they don't like it, but it does seem that it's going to continue into legislation. Yeah, so he now says, as he's been out there campaigning on behalf of this, uh, as Rodriguez, he's saying that this erode, that unregulated speech erodes the foundations of democracy. That free speech apparently is somehow, as Reclaim the Net puts it, antithetical to democracy. So only regulated speech can keep democracy going strong. And of course, we've, we've already heard this from from Justin Trudeau. That literally makes no sense. Well, according to them, it does, because what they're saying is that hate speech and things that could, like, rally people to violence uh, are, are going to bring down democracy, just which like is, the trucker convoy. Right, which right? is what they labeled the truckers, who were even those that were not violent, which was most of them. Right. Yeah, I mean, so, again, so here, here's more uh, in this. Uh, let me see if I can pull this up here. Um, yes. Content that will be regulated uh, includes Facebook posts, private... Sorry, say that again. Yes, I will. Thank you, Siri. Thank you. My watch. Thank you, Siri. I will say that again. <laughs> Content that would be... See, even Siri would be regulated. I wasn't touching it. Uh, Siri would be regulated under this, right? Content that would be regulated includes Facebook posts, private Twitter DMs, Amazon listings, video games, even listings on Airbnb. Look at this. Many experts mentioned there is a justification to look more widely at some interactive services like Airbnb and gaming platforms, basically forums. Many experts supported the notion that private communication should be included under the scope of the legislative framework. Private messaging services should also be regulated. 
oh, so if you use, I don't know, iMessage or if you use WhatsApp or Telegram to communicate, we're going to regulate that now. And how are they going to do that? By giving themselves more access to your communication. Right. Yeah, we're going to look at what information is going through this. And if we deem it disinformation is what they're saying, then this will, we see that as a, an affront to freedom and democracy. So we are going to clamp down on that disinformation. If you, if you are one of the people that's a purveyor of misinformation or disinformation in Canada, we are going to watch you. Or information we otherwise see. See, now like. this, is, this is scary. Yeah. yeah, and this is scary because, like, we just covered recently how the, the White House just started a task force called the Task Force for Online Harassment and Abuse, and it's basically saying the exact same thing. It's, it's, it's more targeting a specific group of people, but it's the same sentiment. Um, and so this is starting to become a global thing. Like, like in the language of the White House, of the memorandum that Biden signed, they're saying global Yes, not this, just in the United States. Well, when people sit there and say, oh, this whole WEF, World Economic Forum thing is a, is a conspiracy theory, it's not. This is exactly what they talk about in these meetings. Yeah. So then Justin Trudeau flies into uh, Montana. Where were they just recently? Uh, were they in one, um, Wyoming or Montana together? All of them. They all got together and they have these meetings, right? They have these discussions in these meetings and then they go back to their respective countries and they implement these things. It happens in the United States. And then, oh, suddenly Canada is doing the very same thing. Right, and then the Netherlands is, is doing the same thing. But this is the thing that Western leaders condemn China for. Right. Right. Because the Internet is not open in China. You absolutely cannot just Google things that the Chinese government doesn't want you to discover. You can't chat freely about things that the Chinese government doesn't like. Absolutely. That's the case. Uh, so, you know, but again, Justin Trudeau has said that he likes China's Sort of oh, he loves China. Government He's a puppet model. of China, basically. And, you know, maybe this is there because they see China as now China is becoming the global power, right? Yeah. So maybe this is how the, maybe China's got there, right? China's got there by being singularly focused and controlling and doing what they're doing, right, with, with, across the world. And so maybe now the, the, the World Economic Forum is saying, okay, do we want to cede this land to China? Do we want to give over to this control to China? Maybe we need to do what they do which is control our people. And there's already a business model, or there's already yeah, they, sort of a, a, a internet model for this, right? So when Google went to China in the early 2010s, they realized, oh, you know, it's really hard for us to do business here because the Chinese government has such strict regulations about search results. So they closed up shop and they were sort of salivating over all the revenue they were losing. So they went back to China two or three years later with a brand new business model that suited politicians there. Right. So yeah, big tech could do it. They could do it for Canada. If Canada passes this bill and tells them exactly what they want their Google to look like, big tech will do it. Yeah. Cause what Google, they brought up stakes, right? They were like, Oh, you know, we really stand for the people. So we're going to leave mainland China. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to go to Hong Kong. <laughs> Yeah, we'll go to Hong Kong, but then we're going to go to Hong Kong and then we're going to reconstitute ourselves back in mainland China under some different names. Hey, we're going to name our company Alphabet now because you didn't say Google couldn't be, you know, now we're not Google anymore. We're Alphabet. So we're all a bunch of these different companies. Our search engine is under this company and this is under this company. And that's how well, they even guys, Apple, these guys get around it. Apple did that with that Fox company or whatever, like with the, the, yeah. where they manufactured. The, yeah. I mean, th this happens. It's like they, they get on that and they're like against it, but then they... You know, if there's profit to be made, then all their morals go out the window. That's the way they roll. That's the way they roll. Thank you so much for subscribing to our channel. You know, we've been banned. We've been blocked. We've been censored. That's why we started our own website to stay connected with you for free. That's right. So head on over to redacted.inc and make sure you're connected with us. You can sign up again at redacted.inc, not .com.